Larry Tripp, 11270 East Maple, North Canton, Ohio. North Canton Law Director Tim Fox, you have done yourself and your profession well. Congratulations on becoming a part-time clerk to the council clerk of North Canton. Excellent. Well done, North Canton City Council. Four people to, play, to replace one person. Four people to replace a one-person city charter authorized council clerk position. Let's see. We will now have a full-time finance slash council clerk based on a salary of $100,000 yearly, including pension benefits, giving 25% of her time to council clerk duties, costing the city $2,083. A law director, part-time clerk for council clerk, same salary, but giving 15% of his time, costing the city $1,250. A clerk spitting, splitting her time between finance and council clerk duties at $50,000 annually, costing the city monthly for her part-time contribution to council clerk based on 50%, $2,084. Then a court reporter based on $30,000 annually, a $2,500 monthly charge. Citizens of North Canton, that totals $7,917 versus a full-time council clerk at $4,168. You have now increased the cost of a council clerk by $3,749 monthly or annually $44,999. Understand, this is a very basic, simple estimate but one that may reflect a clear argument that the so clerk arrangements discussed last week may be a burden, it may be very costly to the city. A cost will never be known because of the real time devoted to the council clerk's position by the finance director, law director, and the part-time clerk because they'll never be known. Mr. Mayor, as brought to your attention to the city a few weeks ago by Mrs. Rolls, both the finance director and law director have been stripped of major duties for whatever reason, some good, some bad. What have they done with their free time since then? Frankly, I believe there's no accountability within the legislative branch of North Canton. There is misinformation on the city website as to duties performed by these two individuals. There's no updated job description for these two positions. I would venture to say probably never has either had a performance appraisal conducted by the council president. Thus, Mr. Mayor, I believe it imperative and your duty to the city that a performance audit be conducted on the finance finance director, law director, and council clerk positions looking into matters such as efficiency and effectiveness. The, the audits exist. I gave you, Mr. Foltz and the finance director, information that I received from the auditor's office. I believe in imperative. This council clerk problem has been brewing for the past three years boiled over in mid-December, and lingered until now when you were probably forced to make some type of decision which resulted in what you now have, one that could ultimately cost the city thousands of dollars. In my folder, I have a temporary permanent recommendation that in fact retains the finance director by title only as a council clerk, one that in fact would perhaps be less costly, more flexible, more manageable. Because I may exceed my five minute time limit today by 25 or 30 seconds, it will wait till, have to wait until next week. As council president told me last week, rules are rules and absolutely must be followed. Thank you. <coughs> Chuck Osborne, 307 Gregory Street, 
southeast North Hampton, Ohio. I wasn't going to speak tonight because I tell you, it's another waste of time. You people do not want to hear from your constituents. They are hostile to your constituents and many other kind of negatives. And for the last several years, we're just reflecting back on what you're projecting onto us. At any rate, I want to just uh, back up Mr. Uh, Tripp. Something that hasn't been talked about here in several years. I'm not sure how long we've been in Rita now. How much was income tax a part of your daily duties? Because we've, we've got Rita now. You no longer are handling income tax. It's my understanding. Was that 20%, 40% of your duties? We've all repeatedly talked about utilities, how it's all been automated. So I'll, and I think you've probably lost half of your staff. So your duties and responsibilities drop by half. Same thing for the law director. We no longer have mayor's court. The law director is no longer pursuing the delinquent tax uh, scoff laws. He's no longer handling, handling uh, labor negotiations. So how much is Mr. Fox's? time been freed up by a reduction in these duties and responsibilities. Mrs. Brown, I think your suggestion that you take over the corporate council is kind of self-serving. And maybe you're trying to help Mr. Fox as well, because neither one of you had full-time duties as a result of all these reductions in responsibilities. This is the wrong path to go, to get rid of a corporate council it's the heartbeat of this city. It's the nerve center of this very council body. And we've been up here several times in the last four and a half years reporting out the mistakes of the previous clerk of council, which I, I can only assume you finally relented and let her go at the end of December. I don't know why we're not getting someone to replace her. But you've dug a hole for yourself for several years here. Uh, the poor lady that you just fired here in December, she got absolutely no training. And on one occasion after she'd been here about a year, I pointed out some issues, and she sat right here and looked up at me and says, I'm going to do it my way. So, in your defense, she was untrainable. She was not going to do it anybody's way except hers. And now, maybe by the letter of the law, you're complying with it. But the spirit of the law, outsourcing all the duties of the clerk of council amongst at least four or five other people. And Mrs. Brown was talking about the new voice over IP phone system. We don't obviously know who's going to be answering the phone when you call the clerk of council. It could be anybody on city, that's up here in City Hall. This is the wrong way to go. So with all the issues we saw with due process and procedure and formatting that occurred under the auspices of Mr. Fox now, who has taken over, they're obviously going to continue. And nobody's going to take ownership of this position. Somebody's going to be given one aspect of it, and they're not going to know how it ties in with the whole big picture. They're not going to be responsible. We're not complying with records retention and records So I, I just see a, a continual decline in the governance of this city. So I think you ought to think long and hard. You may not have gotten some adequate applicants for that position, because the word was out there. Until you correct the problem with a law director here who created a hostile work environment for a prior clerk of council, you're not going to find anybody who's going to walk into this can of worms here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we, uh, one will be a time for you to comment on it. Yes. So we're not doing special council meeting. We're not doing reports. We're really here. We can only 
discuss in this meeting uh, this uh, ordinance number 18-19 uh, by, by law. That's the only thing we discuss. So, any other questions? I'll have one after. Okay, anyone else wishing to address council, please step forward, state your name and address for the record, please. Okay, seeing none, we will move on to full business. Um, I have a motion and a second to read by title only, second reading, ordinance number 18 19. So moved. Second. In favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Yes, sir. In ordinance repealing and replacing ordinance number 27-2016 to increase the rates for season memberships and daily admissions at the City of North Canton Municipal Swimming Pool and repealing any and all legislation inconsistent herewith and declaring the same to be an emergency. Thank you. As we discussed last week, um, contracts have been modified, the rate, uh, rate, excuse me, rate structure has been modified, and uh, I think there was a question about the wine membership. So, if you want to weigh in on that, just for the record. Yeah, the, uh, uh, they're, they're still offering the 25% discount for wine membership holders for season passes. Okay. Provided the purchase before, <coughs> uh, get the 25% after. Yeah, it would be on the higher in season. That's correct. So, that, yes, that does apply. I had a couple phone calls on that. Yeah. Any other comments from council? No. I'd like to pass this on emergency tonight. Uh, I know a few other members will be out of town next week, and it'll just uh, hasten the process by 30 days. Uh, so we get the rate structure uh, out to the public so they can purchase the, the, the trades. So. Then I move we adopt the second reading of ordinance number 18-2. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We have a motion and a second to suspend the rules of council. So moved. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> and finally, a motion and a second to adopt under suspension. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. All right, thank you. That concludes uh, this meeting. Um, motion to adjourn this meeting. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We adjourn. And then I'd like to call the order of the committee meeting. Uh, Monday, uh, March 18th, uh, 7.01 p.m. And, uh, we'll call the roll. Yeah. Uh, roll, we'll call the roll, please. Peters. Here. Foltz. Here. Serrano. Here. Revolt. Here. Keesling. Here. Warren. Here. And Fonte. Here. All present. All right, thank you very much. First up, Community Economic Development, Chair Woman, please. <coughs>
Joe one more. Okay. So Laura and I had talked about doing this sometime last year. We kind of said, let's put this on the radar. So we first to look at warning signs and be proactive. And I don't know if to talk about it, but I think it keeps us looking forward. So thank you. Sure. Um, so what we have is a draft general fund balance policy. This is something that is a best practice recommended by GFOA, which is the Government Finance Officers Association. It's also um, a policy that debt rating agencies really like to see cities have in place, um, and not just you know an informal something the finance director looks at day after day, but you know something that council has approved and that you know, we're dedicated to following each and every year. Um, the reason that ratings agencies like to see this is because it basically sets forth um, a minimum fund balance that the general fund is going to keep. So that's just kind of our safety net that if you know revenues would drop off suddenly, like what we had you know a number of years ago when we were left in you know, the global recession, but that you have kind of a safety net there to, to back you up in the general fund. And, you know, as we know, general fund is on the hook for any fund in the city. So if any fund has trouble, general funds there to bail it out. Um, the policy that I've drafted, I did that by um, looking at best practices, like I said, from national and state groups, as well as um, gathering up sample policies from a lot of cities around Ohio that have these policies in place. And I want to give a special thank you to the fiscal officer over at the Library. She was undergoing a similar project. There's an email where we can send out, you know, please send us your policies to other governments. And she had already gathered those, so she shared them with me. So I thank her for that. Um, but I went through, I had things from all around the state. I had Kent, Louisville, Chardon, Dublin, just a number of cities that I looked at. And I tried to take the best parts of each. Um, this has a lot of rationale and, and kind of technical stuff in it, accounting-wise. But the base policy is that um, the general fund year in balance will not be less than 25% of general fund appropriations, which what that means is we have about three months of expenses in the bank. That, you know, if Rita shut down for some unknown reason, a tornado blew away and we didn't get income taxes for three months, we still would be okay and be able to keep paying our bills. So that's what this policy is. Um, if anybody has any other questions, I'd be happy to try to answer them. Yes, sir. Historically, are you aware of any situation where we've had less than a 25% balance moving into a new year? We typically okay. don't. We don't. I'm not no. aware of any. But no. again, this is just good practice. Yeah, this is just a minimum. You know, and, and one thing that it asks us to do is that when we do the budget for, let's say, next year for 2020, I will let you know this budget either complies with this policy or it doesn't, so we don't budget ourselves into a hole. So if I understand this, Looking at the application description on page two, essentially the uh, finance director would be setting off a fire alarm in the last quarter if that fund balance was less than, appeared to be less than 25%. Well, really in any quarter, because any I quarter. monitor balances every month, Understood. so if I saw it was headed that direction. But from a reporting down. standpoint, there's a formal obligation mm -hmm. to alert the council and the administration. That's correct. And a shortfall could be anticipated. Right, and there are some conditions in there where you can use the balance. You'll see those at the bottom of page two. If we had a natural disaster, if we had an unexpected decline, but then there are some things in the policy that say if you use them, then you have to put a plan in place to replenish that balance. It's essentially mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Any other questions on that? Um, like a lot of you know, the, the, it's been said that you should have, you know, three months minimum, six months is better, one year is great. Mm -hmm. That's like you know, planning standpoint. So, how do I know a lot about that? So, three months is our magic number, not four, or five, or six. Right. The the um, GFOA recommendation is at least two, three is better. Subsidies do six, but not very many. Twenty five percent is pretty common. Okay. Thank you.
government supposed to obtain a purchase order or a fiscal officer certificate is the, the technical term for it for a purchase before you know obligating the city for those funds. Sometimes that doesn't happen due to errors or other oversights. So there's a, a provision called the then and now certificate. Basically, it's the fiscal officer's way of saying we had the money then when the purchase was obligated, we have it now when the check is going to be cut and the bill paid. And um, if those are under $3,000, the planning instructor can do those myself, but over $3,000, I need to get council approval to, to do that. And we had some park expenses that we didn't have a PO in place prior to um, the vendor performing the work. That's my bad. Uh, 
in front of your dais. And the, uh, as you can see, the breakdown uh, on there, we kind of moved it, broke it out between the engineering department and the council room, so that you can see uh, the difference between the two. The grand total to move uh, all this around is approximately $143,000. How much again? I've been here. One hundred forty-three thousand dollars, approximately. Do you believe you'll save money by consolidating everybody under one roof in the long run? What would that say? Do you have any ideas? Yeah, I, I do believe that we will sit, there will be uh, cost synergies on on uh, employees. Uh, I know that some of these folks reach. Uh, you know, retirement age or if they were to be uh, find other opportunities. By having everyone here, we can reassign those responsibilities and keep it in-house without having to hire anybody else. So yes, I, I, I wouldn't have, we wouldn't be proposing it if I didn't think that it was benefiting the city financially in the short term and the long term. I think uh, another aspect of that is the ability to further space in the facility and the ability to offer it as uh, rentals uh, is expanded in that nation. Uh, thank you for that uh, friendly reminder. Yes, we have been talking about that those spaces that would be vacated, those are nice size meeting rooms uh, that people are looking to take advantage of to rent. You know, we really have, we don't have that now. We have and you come up here and rent the conference room. Um, that's not the only room that we have, other than you'd have to go to the front of the pavilion. And that's not what people are really looking for. So it's a great place to have meetings. Um, from civic organizations, we had one here uh, a couple weeks ago. We're working with a new group to bring a new event to the city, and uh, they need a meeting space. <coughs> Yes, uh, great question. We had uh, done the schematics down there uh, with the tables and chairs that are being rented. Uh, one of the offices of the uh, previous uh, chief building official will now serve as the place to store the tables and chairs. Therefore, the dais would be, would be stored in that uh, room. That's the room right behind the projection screen, double doors are. So it literally just open those up, wheel these right out, drop them in place, uh, configure them in any number of different ways we like, something similar to this, or if on a committee the whole night you want a giant O for Ohio State and sit around that, uh, that would work oh, too. Yeah. Yes, I think you also mentioned that we would be able to incorporate all the electronics at the dais so that we wouldn't need someone perhaps to, to start uh, recording and so forth. And the problems that we have had with projecting, uh, when we had two screens or just projecting here, we found uh, perhaps one of the causes, uh, but what we were going to have, I believe, in the plans is a hard <coughs> Yes, yeah, so that's a great point uh, with that. Uh, you know, the individual that would uh, be functioning in the, in the clerk capacity would have the ability to uh, not only be able to put the stuff up on a screen, and by the way, the screen down there would be, is being upgraded to something that's more relevant today and size-wise so that you'd be able to see it from nearly the back of the civic center. Um, but the, the clerk would be able to see know what's going to be up on the screen and if someone was to bring in a PowerPoint or something that they wanted to put up, there would be a, uh, a delay of about seven seconds on the second screen so that to make sure that anything that was being put up on the screen was appropriate and would we'll allow the clerk to hit a kill switch if there was something that was inappropriate that was going to be put up there. So all these things are available now and are being used in other communities. Uh, we would have 
in the dais format a, a monitor that would face the council so that the screen behind you that is seen by the audience, you wouldn't have to turn and looking this way. You could still face the audience and see the screen in front of you. What is that exactly? Uh, I noticed on here that you know, the sound system and everything, which is great. One of the things we probably need to address down there is still that air conditioner unit, how much noise it makes and how it overcomes you know, your sound upgrades. I mean, even when we had that last meeting down there with the uh, architect, when that came on, that's an issue. So we need to maybe take a look at that still today. I mean, I'm just saying that we need to look at more than just, I mean, I can see your things that we need to take care of some of the issues down there that might overcome some of our nice little uh, sound. Well, but the stuff that you have down there is not commercial grade sound equipment. It doesn't uh, meet the test. The stuff that we've been demoing down there, uh, you know, we could hold a rock, rock concert if we wanted. So the stuff that you're getting overcomes all that, and we've been able to test some of that out already. Uh, we've also you know, made some upgrades and repairs to the, the HVA system down there that has quieted it down. It's better than when it was when we had the EPA That's meeting. Right. But I think when you get the new sound system in there, you, you, you will see how that um, completely overcomes that. But that is, that is something that we've been engineering over very get go. Yeah, I know. And, and that could be another issue. We, we, we would have to <coughs> people hearing us here, but won't be an issue there. Would be, we, we surely don't need that. Right. If I can add some tech to it, um, there's going to be a DSB, which is a digital sound processor, that a signal processor that's going to be added in. There's some really high tech stuff also. Um, there will be a, a surge elimination, you know, to provide, you know, more uh, protection to the rack mounted equipment that we didn't have before. And something called an ALS system, that's for anyone, it's ADA compliant, it's assisted listening system. Um, anyone hearing impaired, they can adjust a hearing aid um, to the uh, system so that the frequency will help them to be able to manage all the background noise. So there's some, uh, I can give you like more information uh, based on what's included in the technical quote down to the specs of everything. So it's really upgrading all of this and making it much more streamlined, like Tim mentioned be able to um, operate from a, one single iPad <coughs> and just improving the quality overall of everything that we have. Just, just another quick information. <coughs> Who will be the ones setting that up for council and tearing it down? It'll be our staff. Okay. I mean, yeah, we don't want to get down there and all of a sudden our clerk who we do not have has to set up some things there and then we do everything there. We need to make sure that everything is set when it's set. It's just a communication thing. I'm sure you we know the meetings are on Monday nights. Mm -hmm. It will be set up. Mr. President, yes. can I address the streaming question that we had during public speech since we're talking about technology? Um, I still do not know why last week's meeting didn't stream. One thing I can tell is that the software that we use is called Wirecast has had some kind of an update. Unfortunately, I'm not familiar with the update, so I don't know how to change the settings. I worked on it for about an hour this afternoon. Finally got it to go. I did a test stream and went out on YouTube. I could watch it on my phone. Had it all set up, ready to go. Just looked on my phone for this meeting. It is not streaming again. So we are still having problems with this equipment. It's very touchy. And one of the things I found out when I was in here this afternoon, you know sometimes we get that really loud feedback in the speakers and the microphones? We were having that today. I turned the volume up and down. It's the only solution that we typically have is just to turn the volume down. I was going around checking to see if any of the mics were not on, and when I did that, I stepped on that wire right in front of my desk. Feedback went away. So the point of this story is to say what is in this room is kind of cobbled together, and it is not functioning as it should. And last week's meeting, one of the four screens that you have there at the clerk's desk, one of those is telling you it's streaming. It's streaming right now. And what you need to do is to, to ensure that is to sit on your phone and to monitor it and watch it. As the clerk for last week's meeting, I chose that you know, the most important thing that I could do is follow along to make sure that we hit all the things that we needed to as a council and not on my phone whether or not it's streaming is telling me it's streaming. We finished, we saved it, and it's not there. So it 
this uh, ecological uh, anomaly. Uh, it did nothing different than it did previous week where everything was acting just as it was there, meetings there. One of the things was that uh, a, a bit of a disconnect between YouTube and the software that we were using, where YouTube wouldn't allow us to use that uh, non-proprietary software to name and date meeting. So it gave it the same date that we had used as the, the last one. And the frustration was, well, wait a minute, that's two weeks ago. Started to play it and no, it's just had given it the same title, working with uh, Director of Finance, very tech savvy. She was able to figure out the change in the uh, policy with UT not accepting the non-proprietary software. She was able to go in and give it its, its proper date. But that's uh, a bit of the frustration is the, the, the technology that we have right now tells us, hey, everything's working fine. And when you attempt to utilize it to go out and watch it later, you find out it actually wasn't. Question. So if you can't stream it live, if you have a technical difficulty, it's still being recorded, right? Yeah, so still you can always audio, post yes. it. But what I'm saying is that if it's not streaming live, I mean, there should be a way that it's still recording where you can post it. There well, we, we have an, an audio that has been actually, although it has been finicky, it's been tried and true. Once we went through the process of learning how it works, it records by station. And so when we have to back up, uh, we had a situation where a court reporter was disturbed during the meeting. And this is our, our digital uh, recording backup. We can hear and recognize from the names and we can actually reduce it to the channel if we were unsure of uh, which person it is we can know it came from this spot or this spot. It's working right now. Okay. Yeah. I'd be interested to know how much money you've spent on technology. Can't hear. I'd be interested to know how much money you've spent on technology and improving the acoustics in this room over the last 20 years. It's been a recurring problem, but you know, while we're all enthralled with technology, I think we shouldn't lose sight of the fact that the real reason we're moving down to the Civic Center is to provide the administration with management authority. <coughs> Consolidation of our personnel, key personnel, in one location for reasons of better management. And at the end of the day, that contributes to better outcomes I could just, I wanted to comment just on a couple of things. Uh, first off, I think that it's a great idea that uh, the council is going to move their chambers down to the Civic Center. We, you know, obviously clearly support that decision uh, because, as uh, Councilmember Holt stated, that it will allow the city employees to come together, and it just, uh, it just brings better synergy and a better working relationship, both for the employees and then also the supervisors. Uh, and, you know, down at the Solid Waste District where I'm at during the day, you know, we have monthly meetings and we hold them with folding tables and uh, an electronic equipment it goes without a hitch. We put, you know, nice tablecloths over it, done it for years, nice professional setting, but it does allow flexibility so that you can conduct other meetings in that same room. So I think that's a good, a really good move. The other thing is, uh, you know, with, the, uh, with our finance director serving as the uh, Council clerk, I think it's a great idea that council did that because obviously we had a clerk uh, that serves under the uh, the appointment of city council that had retired, and that left a vacancy. So then we had the, the law director and the finance director that were, you know, uh, attempting to keep this, you know, keep it moving even though there was a short period of time. But when you look at the charter, council does have the authority to appoint a clerk to council. They just can't be an elected official but they can be an appointed uh, official for the city. And then if you also look at the charter too, and, and this is really everything that uh, our finance director is doing is right in accordance with the charter. 
So it's under 3.5, and I know council members are all aware of this. I'm just offering support for the decision to be made because I thought it was a great idea. Um, that uh, the director of finance uh, or their deputy may serve as the clerk of council. And as far as the responsibility, it lies with the person who signs off on the meeting minutes. And so when you look at the duties that the director of finance does, she's responsible for every single penny that is spent in the city, in every single department, whether it's safety or service, and to keep track of all those records. And I will say that she's had a perfect audit with the state of Ohio. So, um, and not to mention with her previous experience, She's read hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of meeting minutes. Because when she would go in and audit municipalities, or villages or townships, or school boards, she would have to read through the meeting minutes in order to do the audits. So um, it's in accordance with the charter, which the finance director, it says under uh, what is it, 3.5, that the clerk may hold any other municipal point of office um, for the, uh, no, it's not 3.5. Yeah, it talks about the, uh, the director of finance or a deputy may serve as clerk for meetings of administrative divisions or for the other divisions requested by council. So council asked her to do it. She's not getting any more money. Really what it is is she's just increased her responsibility uh, and really doubled it. Because it doesn't really matter what takes place. She's the one who's signing off on it. She's the one who has the responsibility. So I appreciate it. And I know council does and I'm speaking on council's behalf. We appreciate the fact that we're doing that. I just wanted to make sure that everybody was clear on that. So thank you. Okay, so we want to move this to next week's agenda. Um, yeah, so many times of the essence you want. We won't have enough next week to pass on emergency, but we could do a reading the following week if we had to, if you guys want to do next week if you can schedule a. We'll be at Walsh Bay. Rescheduling. That's the committee of the whole. Committee of the whole. Yeah. We can uh, schedule a, uh, a. We already have a committee meeting for the day first. We can do a quick special council meeting for a second reading of this with an emergency clause. Does that work for you? Does that work for council? We don't make a motion that for we hold a special council meeting Monday, April 1st. Walsh University for consideration of one item, and that would be to appropriate or to transfer funds for the relocation of the council chamber to the city center. Okay. Immediately following your meeting, the need the Turks and the CRAs approved uh, before the end of the month. set the date for the Turk meeting right. that is set by the county right. commissioners and that they set that for today and you know I was lucky to be able to get it on the agenda for tonight. Right. Let alone have it done by so the we first. should have a meeting Thursday. this week or <coughs> yeah. It's gotta be this week. It's gotta be this week. Yeah. It's not the even Saturday. Saturday. You're leaving Saturday. Friday. Friday. You're leaving Friday. Friday evening. My motion is still for See, oh, exactly. <laughs> how about, how about we got that even yeah. still have a discussion about it. Okay. <laughs> so it's a great motion. A great yeah. motion. Um, well, what's everybody what can they do this week? I can I am we went there Thursday. I decided to do Wednesday. I can do Thursday night. I cannot do Wednesday. Can't do Wednesday night. I can do Thursday. I can Thursday. Wednesday at early one. Yeah, so I'm good.
Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay.